stopping at Mazzaro's again today. I'm hooked. So Mazzaro's has a gift shop over here, tea gift shop. They own all of this. All this is their parking. All of this. All the way down. And it's packed today. Thank God we ordered our sandwiches ahead of time. You must order your sandwiches ahead of time if you don't want to stand in line. This is incredible. Everybody knows this is like a five star uh, on Google Review or close to it because it's that good. Customer service is that good. The food's that good. The prices are amazing. Where can you go to get homemade, same day, mozzarella, homemade noodles, raviolis, homemade wedding soup, lentil soup, healthy food. There's a coffee shop you could sit and hang out. There's a little patio, not like a restaurant, but you can get your sandwiches and just sit on the patio. I mean, I've never seen anything this nice and affordable. There was no way I could record without people getting irritated. Thank God I ordered our sandwiches before because it was packed. It was like a long line. Anyways, we got homemade wedding soup, minestrone, homemade today, homemade Italian bread, homemade pizzas to put in the freezer, tortellini with meat inside made today, marinara sauce made today. I'm like in hog heaven. <laughs> So Mazzaro's, you gotta come here. No, this is not sponsored. It's just one of those things, very few places uh, that I get excited about. And uh, I'll probably be here like every other day, twice a week at least. Excellent. I wanted to show you what I got. It was just way too crowded really to record in there. People were just packed. <laughs> so here's a pepperoni pizza, $7.99. It's nothing like any other pizza I've, I've had where I had to cook it myself. This is better than pizza I get at pizza places. It's really delicious. I like it because it doesn't have a ton of sauce. I don't like a lot of sauce, but the sauce is good. Then this one has sausage. Normally I wouldn't get sausage, but all the pepperoni was out. I don't even eat the pepperoni. I like the flavor, but I pull them off and I give them to the kids. I was pulling this out of the bag to show you what I got here and I pulled this out of the bag. I did not put this in my bag. Willow or Noah, and I'm guessing it was Willow, snuck this in here. They like tiramisu. This thing is heavy. It wasn't cheap, but it's homemade, very heavy. It'll last them a little while. They don't eat a whole lot at once. Freshly made marinara sauce. I don't have to spend all day cooking. So here are the Italian wedding soups, and I don't know, I call it minestrone. I'm not sure what you call it. It is $6 a piece. For me, it's worth it because I personally don't like to eat leftovers. I know that you can make a big pot of soup and it'll be good all week, or you could freeze it, but I prefer just to have a little bowl, and I'm good for a week or two before I have another bowl of soup. And same with the kids. We like a little variety, so this is going to be wonderful where I don't have to spend all afternoon making soup at home in Florida when it can get pretty hot. Here's two Italian breads we got. Plain, no seeds. I don't care for the seeds. This is a die for. So I won't be making any more homemade bread, I don't think, anytime soon because if I can go there, this is it. I just can't eat um, that bread you get in the grocery store. It's just full of chemicals, and I could taste it, and it makes me sick. But I could eat this all day long. I'm a bread lover. This is great for dumping in hot chocolate or dumping in eggs. I know grocery stores often have little salads made up, but they're always wilting and everything. This is such a nice small garden salad. It has a little bit of everything. Olives, pepper, I love eggs. I love when they put eggs in salad so 
We got some of these for us for dinner. This is one of the sandwiches we got. They're all about six bucks. This one I think has prosciutto. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. So there you go. There's lots of options. This is hot Italian. This is uh, for Rick, he'll eat that later. Here's another hot sandwich. It has ham. It's a, a flatbread, Italian flatbread of some sort. Oh, it smells good. So I took the bus for the second time here in St. Petersburg, uh, from here to downtown. I really love taking the bus. I'm getting the hang of it. I'd have to say I would not take it, say, to go to the beach. It would take way too long, but this particular route is pretty much a straight shot. Maybe five minutes longer, 10 minutes longer than if I were to take the car, but I don't have to worry about parking the car, paying to park the car. But on the other hand, taking the car is not bad during the day because it's not that crowded and parking's pretty cheap. So I can go either way depending on how I feel. Okay, but if I want to go during the time that there's an event, a concert, something's happening down there, I would probably take the bus so I don't have to fight traffic. So something I am learning living in the city versus living in the suburbs versus living in the country is the bus or public transportation. I find it actually pretty good here. I know in other places where I lived, if I lived in the city, I would not take the bus. It didn't look safe, but I feel pretty safe here uh, taking the bus. I see people from all walks of life taking it. so from kids to old people. So I feel pretty comfortable uh, taking the bus if I want to, or if Noah wants to take the bus because he doesn't drive and if he wants to go downtown to see a concert, he can just jump on the bus and go and I don't have to worry about driving him. Here, I see there's bus stops everywhere, up and down the street. So no matter where you live, even if you live in a community with houses, it wouldn't take long to get to the main street to jump on a bus. In the suburbs where we lived before you would have to walk a couple miles before you got to a bus stop so taking the bus was not even an option not even something i would have thought of because in florida you don't know when it's going to rain or it's too hot and then of course in the country there's just no bus stops at all unless you go into this town and maybe you could find i don't even remember seeing any buses uh, actually even in town, I think you have to go to a bigger city. So my point is there's pros and cons to everything. I love living in the country. Uh, we had the property for 15 years. We had the house on it for 10 years. We loved living there. We lived in the suburbs for almost eight years. We loved living there when we did. No matter where we lived, we enjoyed it and it suited us for that particular time in our life. And now that we're living in the city, I'm really loving it. I was never sure if I would like living in the city, but I do. Uh, I like especially that I have the option of the bus and I never thought I would ride a bus, but I did for the second time and I like it. I'm really getting again to know this area. So yesterday we took a ride over to Tampa. So this is something I thought I should share with you. If you're working in Tampa, I recommend you live in Tampa. And if you live in Pinellas County, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, wherever on this side, I would say live on this side. So if you're gonna cross these bridges or areas where there's tolls, you may wanna get the Sun Pass. If you're gonna cross often. On the website it says it's less expensive than paying cash, but I didn't see anywhere where you pay cash. <laughs> so I really don't know if that's correct or not. Maybe if you live here, you can tell me, but I personally won't be crossing over a whole lot, so it's, I probably won't get the sun pass. When you're driving through these toll areas, there's cameras everywhere and they take a picture of your uh, front of your car, the back of your car, and then you get a bill in the mail, and then you go to sunpass.com and you pay your bill. So the more you cross these toll uh, areas, the more you're gonna pay. There is a bus that will take you over to Tampa if you're just going right downtown and don't wanna drive and it's cheap and you don't have to worry about parking or the tolls. So that's something to think about if you live here or if you're vacationing here. We have options of driving sometimes, maybe taking the bus sometimes. They are talking about a light rail along the highway. I don't know if that's going to actually happen you know, for passengers or if it's not gonna happen for years, I don't know. If you have an option, if you wanna live in Tampa or if you wanna live in Pinellas County, 
it's up to you, you know, your own personal preference. Tampa is m more, uh, I'd say, crowded, a lot more people. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing for you. There's a lot of business, a lot of commerce, a lot of things to do. So if you're younger, you might be really into that. I like it, uh, but I really like it over here too, because it's not as crowded. I find that it's a little more chill for me, but I'm close enough to Tampa that I can get there in a heartbeat by Uber or bus or car. So I don't feel like I'm too far away from Tampa if I want to go there. There's an Ikea over there, by the way. I love Ikea. I don't buy anything. Most of the stuff I buy is on Amazon and have it shipped to me because I hate shopping. But I do like walking through Ikea and we do have one in Tampa. The other thing I wanted to cover with you and the things that I've learned since we moved here is A, we love the apartments that we're in. You can kind of see the reflection here. They take really good care of the pest control. They're here every week, but you live in Florida and you're bound to find something somewhere. Now, when we go into our house, I was like maybe a little bit of a fanatic when it came to making sure no bugs came into my house. And I never sprayed in my house. I just don't like that idea. I would put the granules that they have at Home Depot or Lowe's in the um, grass. We had woods around us, so you got spiders, ants, that kind of thing coming towards your house. So that prevented anything coming near our house. But I also sprayed around home defense, around the windows, because mosquitoes or ants could crawl through. But with spraying outside around the windows, nothing ever came in. So that was, it worked out really good for me. Now that we're here at the apartment, I don't want them coming in to spring our apartment either, but they do spray the, um, right in front of me here, the uh, garden area. You still have little tiny spiders that come up on the balcony sometimes. It just happened actually this past week. Three days in a row, I had this little spider and I kept taking spider webs down and they kept coming back. So I was like, What's a way I could do it naturally without putting uh, spray? I didn't want them coming in and spraying. We had plants here that were um, trying to grow some peppers and uh, I don't know what else Will is growing here, some herbs. So I didn't want to put any pesticide out here. So I forgot, I've got my Young Living Essential Oils and I remember reading I could use that to keep uh, cockroaches away, spiders away, just insects all together. I have a bunch of oils of course I have them in my diffuser every night because it just relaxes me but I know they said that you could put it in a glass bottle with water and vinegar and I hate vinegar that's just the one thing I can't stand the smell of I know it's crazy because 99% of the people eat salads with vinegar or you like pickles oh my god I can't I don't like it <laughs> I can't stand the smell of it so I didn't want to do it that way but I read that you could put cotton balls full of your essential oils. And they said it would only last a couple of days or so, but that's because you're probably not using good essential oils. Our oils here, it's been a week and it has a real strong smell still. I guess peppermint essential oil is like the best one to keep cockroaches and spiders away. Um, orange or any citrus, lime, lemon, uh, let's see what else, uh, clove, there was like a long list of different ones, but peppermint was like the number one. So I saturated this with all the uh, oils that was on the list because I had them all. And it's still strong, but it smells good. So I put it in my chair. My chair here has a little cup holder. I put it in my chair and Willow's chair and the spider webs have not returned. So 100% it works. I also put these under the sink because uh, insects like uh, moisture, uh, water, not that there's any water dripping down there, but I figured I'd put it in the uh, bathroom and under the kitchen sink. And I haven't had any problems with any insects in the house or not even on the patio. And we have plants and we have, like I said, the um, uh, little garden in the front area. So I'm so happy that I discovered this. I think this will probably last. 10 days maybe, and then I could just resaturate it you know, with a few drops of each one and, and just leave it here. And it's not going to um, disturb the plants and I'm not gonna get poisoned. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that with you if you are down here and wondering what you could do.
most of the uh, essential oils, the cheap ones like from Walmart, they've got other stuff. I don't know if they have alcohol on it or what, just to you know, water it down a little bit. But the Young Living is pure. You can read more about it if you want. The link is in my description box if you want to know all about it because there's so much and I don't want to bore you if you're not into it, but check it out. The other thing I thought I'd share with you if you're new to Florida or coming down for vacation, and I already have known this because I've lived here for eight years, is always carry a sweat jacket, a sweater with you, even if it's midsummer and it's 90 degrees, because restaurants and stores are cold. Maybe some of you don't get cold like I do. I'm always cold. It could be 85 degrees and I can, you know, get cold. <laughs> So I always have a sweat jacket or sweatshirt because they really turn that air conditioning on high at these places. So just giving you a warning, carry that sweat jacket with you if you're a person who gets cold and you know don't want to freeze through your lunch or dinner at a restaurant or through the store. And the other thing I wanted to say too, because Pensacola, the people were so friendly and so was Northport, but Pensacola was really friendly. And then I was moving here and I was wondering, how the people would be because you have people of all ages. I think most of the people that I come across are college age to retirement age, but mostly working age group. I gotta say everybody is civil, respectful, uh, very friendly, and I like that. So I feel comfortable, I feel at home. You know how you live or maybe vacation in a place you just don't feel like you fit in or it doesn't feel comfortable. This feels very comfortable for me. I feel at home. I think I plan on retiring here. Uh, I don't know, in this building particularly, even though I very much love it, I don't have any intention of moving. I, you know, I go back and forth thinking, maybe one day I wanna live downtown, but I'm actually in a perfect spot because I can go right over the bridge, I'm in Tampa, or I could just go straight down and I'm in downtown and I'm right next to the grocery store and everything I need. So I don't know, you know how life is. It comes up with new things for you to look at and new opportunities, but I hope I stay in this area because the weather is perfect for me and it feels very homey. And I just wanna say thank you to all of you who ask me questions or share your experience with me because when you do, you're sharing with everybody else on this channel. And I love it when you update me on your route because a lot of you maybe started following me two years ago and you're asking questions about moving to Florida and you're selling your house and you're downsizing and you're keeping me updated and I love it. I know some people say, well, tell me how it goes, but they really don't mean it. I really mean it. When I say I want to hear back from you, I really want to hear back from you. I really care. <laughs> I might be a rare bird, but I really do care what you're doing because I think it, A, helps everybody else, but it does motivate me and it makes me feel good to know that you're doing something that you love and when other people are happy, I'm happy. I guess that's a little selfish, isn't it? <laughs> you're happy, I'm happy, but it's true. I, I love seeing people following their dreams or goals or passions. But it doesn't have to be moving to Florida, whatever your goals are. And I love how you share how you go about those uh, goals because it takes a lot of planning and it gives everybody a little bit of an idea of what maybe they can do because everybody does things differently so my way is not the only way or the right way so when everybody shares here it really helps others have an idea well maybe I'll try it this way or that way and anywho I just want to say thank you so much for commenting and keeping us updated on this channel on what you're doing if you're brave enough uh, start making videos on your move because there are so many people who want to know because it's scary when you're moving especially out of state especially if you don't have family in this new state and especially if you've been very close to your family and born and raised in one area that's completely different from here you're coming blindfolded it could be scary so it's really really nice people share here and I think it makes other people feel better about their move and then it's not so scary it's it's when you don't know what's happening the unknown that's when things are really scary the more you know the easier things are the less stressful 
thumbs up if you like. Please share. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to live a passionate life.